Language is the dress of thought, said Samuel Johnson, an 18th century English writer who contributed significantly to English literature. So what does your language attire look like? Do you settle for the same old jeans and t-shirt or do you like to mix it up with a stylish coat or a fancy hat of rare words now and then? In the next few minutes, embark on a journey to expand your linguistic wardrobe, adding some new threads of vocabulary that will make your thoughts stand out in the crowd. Imagine you stumble upon the word petrichor in a book. Any guesses about what it might mean? Here's a hint. It's something that you might experience after a rainfall. Yes, petrichor is the pleasant earthy smell that frequently accompanies the first rain after a long period of warm, dry weather. A beautiful word for a beautiful phenomenon, isn't it? Now, where can you find such intriguing words? The Oxford English Dictionary and the Webster English Dictionary are two treasure troves that you can dive into. These dictionaries don't just provide the meanings of words but also their origins, helping you understand and remember them better. Apart from dictionaries, literature is another goldmine of vocabulary. Take the works of Charles Dickens, for instance. His books are not just stories, they are journeys through the lanes and alleys of English language, introducing you to words that you might not encounter in everyday conversations. Think about serendipity. This word, meaning a fortunate accident, first appeared in a letter written by Horace Walpole, a contemporary of Dickens. He coined the term after a Persian fairy tale, The Three Princes of Serendip, where the princes kept discovering things they weren't in search of. And it's not just classic literature that can enrich your vocabulary. Contemporary works like The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt or Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace are packed with rarely used words. However, it's not just about knowing these words, but using them appropriately. If you're describing a peaceful scene, halcyon could be a better fit than calm. And if you're talking about a deep-seated fear, dread might be more accurate than fear. So, are you ready to don a new dress of thought? Along with words also, try to explore those quirky phrases that often leave non-native speakers scratching their heads. Ever wondered why break a leg is a good wish and not a curse? Or why barking up the wrong tree has nothing to do with dogs or trees? Keep watching and keep reading to learn more. Try to think about words that you keep coming across in your journey, and try not skip words when you encounter them. Remember, the more you learn, the more places you'll go, as Dr. Seuss said. So keep learning, keep growing, and keep making your language attire more vibrant and diverse.